Jesus said along the way, if any man comes to me and does not forsake all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. He didn't use that phrase very often, so we'll only discuss when he used it. If any man comes to me and does not forsake all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. It does not say if any man comes to me and is willing, not willing, to forsake all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. It doesn't say that. He doesn't say if any man comes to me and will give 10%, 20%, 30%, 95%, 95%, and just say 5% for yourself, then you could be my disciple. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, if any man comes to me and does not forsake, does not forsake all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Now, I'm not going to stand here and argue with you tonight about what it means to forsake all. Because the facts are, if only one of us in this room did it, the whole world would change through the power of Jesus Christ. And I'm not your judge. There's only one person that has to face squarely that passage, and that's me. I have to find out what did he mean. That was what he was saying to him in private. He didn't say that to the, the crowd. Christ before things. Christ before others. Christ before self. Jesus took them aside and said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. King James Version, the only word with success it is, is Joshua 1.8. You all know the rest of the passages about the scriptures. There is no man or woman committed to Jesus Christ, whether that's the Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, the Jesus Christ of the New Testament, down through the centuries. It's the Word of God. There's three words. The spoken word for which the worlds were created. The written word started in Mount Sinai through the Ten Commandments and multiplied into this wonderful book. And then the incarnate word, Jesus Christ, that dwells in our hearts, which is the greatest word of all. If you continue in the word, then will you be my disciples indeed. Not just the Bible, but the word is the Logos. If you continue in Christ, if you continue in the scriptures, if you continue to obey the voice of God, then will you be my disciple. Jesus Christ said, who a sister and a brother is. He said, don't call any man leader, call no man master, call no man anything, except call him brother and sister. Only one is your leader, Jesus Christ. And they came to him in private and said, Jesus, who is a brother and who is a sister? And Jesus said, a sister and a brother are those that hear my word and do it. Ezra prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord unto what? Do it, and the God of peace will be with them, right? And then to teach. Do it, then teach. Okay? So he's a man that puts Christ before others, self, and, other, and possessions, and he's a man of the word. We could spend all evening on any one of those. Then he's going along, and he gathered his disciples, and he taught them to pray. Our Father who art in heaven. What is prayer? We've lost it. We teach our kids to pray. Okay, we're going to pray at meal. Dear Lord, amen. We come to church. Dear Lord, amen. We've taught an entire nation that prayer is us doing all the talking. Because every time we finish talking, we say amen and lift our heads and go about our business. Prayer has become God talking to us, reading the Bible, or, you know, or, or prayer is us talking to God, reading the Bible is God talking to us. Baloney. Prayer is talking with God. And in talking, it's a two-way operation. I say, hi, John. Then I wait, and John says, hi, Doug. What if I walk down the street, and every morning I said, hi, John, I'll see you, goodbye. Well, he said, well, he must be busy. The next morning I see him, hi, John, goodbye. <laughs> Hello, John, the next day. I mean... The next day, about the tenth day, John see me coming. He'd walk across the street and say, here comes the nut. <laughs> Do you realize that's the way we talk to God? Not you, maybe, but the country. The country. They think that prayer is us doing all the talking. 
It's a conversation. In fact, it's a three-way conversation. It's us talking to God, God talking to us, and us talking and God listening. And when he listens, it says in Malachi that he writes down what we talk about, and then he writes it down in his little book, and then he does it. This is a promise to the servant of the Lord. Isn't that tremendous to think that we can talk to each other, pray to each other, and God listens? Jesus taught him to pray. By example, he got up a great while before day, went into Gethsemane, he sat down and explained to him, gave him a model. There has never been, since the dawn of time, since man began, that a man or woman of God wasn't a man or woman of prayer. And then, the great passage in Matthew 28. After the resurrection, he told the women, call, call up Peter, tell him to bring the gang. We've got to meet over in Galilee. I've got a little talk to give to him. It was the women who carried the message. They didn't have the big problem about believing that he might have resurrected. They knew him. And he sat on the, they sat there, the 11 of them, because Judas is gone. And they said, Jesus said, all power is given unto me. Go ye. All power is given unto who? Me. Jesus. You have no power. If he's got all of it, you have none. That's why you need Jesus to be with you. And so he said, if you'll do this, I'll be with you, even to the end of the world. The big verb in that passage isn't go. The big first ver verb in that passage is to make. As you go into the world, Jesus told him, make disciples, every nation. And he told him previously how to do that. Pray for laborers after you look at the field. We don't have time to go further. Jesus told them they needed to have a worldview. Lenin had a worldview. Hitler had a worldview. They have a worldview. And when you sit with them, if you don't know Christ and you want to account for something, they've got a plan that you can fit in. Most of the kids in our country have no plan because there's no vision. We're going over to the Baptist Church. We're going over to the Presbyterian Church. We're going over to the Catholic Church. In the Bible, the Bible, through the power of the Holy Spirit, talks about people and geography. Paul wrote to the people of Ephesus. Ephesus is geography. The people are the people. Paul wrote his letter to Galatia, to Rome. When the Holy Ghost falls upon you, you'll be a witness where? Geography. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost part of the world, geography, the whole world. For God so loved geography, the whole world. And then he would write to Timothy and to Titus, people. There's Moses and Aaron and Isaac and Jacob. Those are people. It's the way you think. As a man thinketh, so is he. If you think little, you'll be little. If you think big, you'll be big. If you think like Jesus Christ, it makes all the difference in the world.